Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric VTuber, and in this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a blueprint for your third-person character to enable you to turn on and off walking and running simply by holding down the shift key. Now, you can use any key you want, but in this example, I'm gonna use the shift key because I play a lot of first-person shooter games, and the shift key is often used as a toggle for turning on running or sprinting. Now, you may be wondering, hey, Eric, didn't you already make a YouTube short about how to make your player walk? And I did, and that video was really popular. However, it was kind of a hack. I just bound the Q key to make my character move at half speed. And that was kind of a little cheat, and many of you asked for a full tutorial on how to do this as a game developer or a more serious VTuber. So here goes. All right, go up to the top right and go for settings and then drop down to project settings because the first thing we need to do is set up an action bind. So type in the word in the search box action and that's gonna show you what I now have and probably you have is just jump, which is the space bar. So we're gonna click this little plus right here and that enables us to create a new action. And we're gonna type run slash walk and it's really important right now that you remember what you typed right here and you'll know why in just a bit but make note in this box right here that's where we assign the key and i'm going to type the word shift because i'm going to be using my left shift as i said for the toggle of whether i am walking or running once you've done that you can close this window there is no save button just close up the window and you're good to go now it's time to change and create the blueprint so we're gonna to go to the third person character blueprint and that's in your third person folder, assuming that you're making a third person game or environment and open up that blueprint. Once you have it open, you'll see that there's a couple other default blueprints that came for camera input and some other movement, but we're gonna create a brand new one. And I think you guys are gonna like this tutorial because you're gonna learn a little bit about using variables and branching. So let's start off with creating a variable. As I come over here to character movement, these are all the different defaults that are set up for character movement as a component of the third person character. And you'll notice right down where it says max walk speed, the default value is 500 centimeters. So actually the default is running. And that's why some of you wanna learn how to create a walk mode. So just remember that the default is running or moving very fast. Let's create a variable over here by coming to the plus sign and clicking on plus, and we'll call this walk run question mark. And I'm gonna click on this little eye right here to make it visible. And what we're gonna do with this variable is change the default setting. Now, if you look over here, there is no way to do that. That's because you have to click on compile in the top left, might as well click save, and now you'll see walk run is blank. So think about it. If the default value is 500 centimeters per second, the default is essentially running, then blank means we are in run mode. And when we check it, we're gonna make that the state when we are in walk mode. So right now the default is run mode. Now we need to create our first node for the blueprint. I'm gonna right click. And do you remember how important I told you it was to remember what we typed over in the project settings, when I type run slash walk, you'll notice that this action event now appears. That's why it's important for you to remember it. I'm gonna left click on it and here is my node. Let me zoom in. Now we need to create a conditional branch. In programming, that's kind of like an if statement. And what we'll do is say, if it's pressed, meaning if it was pressed, if that shift button was pressed, we're gonna create two different conditions. How do we do that? We create a branch node. So type in B-R-A-N-C-H, and there you have it. Every time I create a new node, all I'm doing is clicking on the right mouse. So now we have our branch. If I press the button, I wanna set up the state for what to do when it's true. Well, we need to know if we're walking or not, and here's the condition. So let's just come over here to our variable, click with the left mouse, drag it out, and we wanna find out what's the state of this variable. So we click get and we plug it into the condition. So we're saying, go find out over here what the condition is and if it is checked, meaning it's true, then what should we do? 
So rather than coming off of true this way and looking for the node, it's easier to take the character movement and drag it out with the left mouse onto the canvas because now when I drag off of this blue node up here, it's given me context sensitive actions. And what do I want to do? I want to set the max walk speed. So I'm just going to type the word max walk and you'll notice set max walk speed is here. And that's because that was one of the values over here in the details and that's the list that I'm getting. So let me click on that and now I have this. Now for those of you that like the shortcuts, um, certainly I could do that again by doing this and typing max walk speed, but watch this. If I just hold my mouse and click it and do control D, that's duplicate, I get the same type of node. Pretty fancy, right? So now plug character movement into this target. So we're saying we're going to be adjusting the character movement. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Just wanted to move the node. We're going to be changing the character movement value in both of these. Now, if it's true, meaning that it's checked, what do we want to do? Well, let's set the walk speed up to 500. And if it's not true, false, let's set our walk speed to something like 150. If we know that the max walk speed or running is essentially 500, well, 150, we'll see what that looks like, but it's a nice, much slower speed. Okay, the last step for us is to now change the value of our variable. And the easy way to do that is just by using a set command. And just like we did over here, we take the variable, drag it out, but in this time, instead of getting the value, we're gonna set the value. And I'm going to plug that right in. And what are we gonna do in the true condition? We're going to have it stay blank. But if we set it in walk mode, what can I do? Come up here and do control D. That is the same thing as taking this and dragging it out. Either way, same result. I'm now gonna plug in this node over here, and this time I'm gonna check the box so that when we put ourselves in walk mode, it will have a check, all right? And that way it will toggle between turning ourselves on and off and changing the speeds. Let's click on compile and click on save, and now let's close our window and see how it is. We're back here in my environment. I'll click on play. Here's my character, and let's start our movement. Now, if you notice again, it starts in the run mode. As soon as I get outside and type the shift key, he starts walking. And what do you notice? How great my butt looks, right? No, you notice I'm walking. If I hit shift again, I start running. And that's it, guys. That's how you can use the shift key, or really any key, to put yourself in walk and run mode. I hope that was really helpful for you guys. I hope it helped as I thought out loud and thought about the logic because you're gonna go through that process yourself. Drop a comment, drop a like if you learned something today. Thanks for coming back to the channel and thank you guys for your feedback. Those comments led me to make this video. It said that you guys wanted a full tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed it. And hey, if you're brand new to the channel, think about subscribing. I am Eric V. Tuber. I like VTubing and I like building 3D environments and teaching you guys what I have learned. We'll catch you guys on the next episode.